right, so guess what is about to go down? We are doing a meal prep video. I've got everything ready. I've got my iPad out so I can watch some YouTube. And I've got my planner out. Um, this is my daily planner, but I have my list of um, what I'm gonna do for my meal planning today. Um, so I need to, you know, do the basics, great cheese, bacon. I'm going to make some hamburgers. I'm going to make a buffalo chicken casserole ahead of time so we can do it for the week. And then I want to make a dessert. I was thinking pumpkin because I bought that can of pumpkin, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, and look at that. Isn't that cute? Ralphie wasn't feeling very well yesterday and he's feeling much better today. hundred percent better. So that's what we're doing. Check it out. Hey guys, okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do today is prep some burgers for lunches for Andy for the week. Um, normally, I do like to buy some at Costco, like the frozen patties. I think they're the Angus beef ones. Those are delicious, but I'm out of them right now, and I know I'm probably gonna go to uh, Sam's next weekend, and I have a couple of pounds of ground beef in the fridge that I wanted to use up. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of these in a different, couple different flavors. Um, I'm gonna make some taco seasoning one and a Creole seasoning package. So I've got my hamburger meat, I've got a couple of storage bags, these are the quart size, and then I also have some Reynolds Kitchen freezer paper. And the only reason I got this is it says wrap and freeze meat, but when I was at Target recently, they had these buy one, get one free, all of the Reynolds paper stuff. So I got the um, baking liner sheets and then I thought I would try these this also it's not something I normally would have got be because it was free I thought hey I'll try it um, really cool kind of shows you how to wrap the meat now I'm not going to wrap it this neat probably but it also tells you the recommended storage time for um, different meats and stuff so ground beef can be um, stored for three to four months in the freezer just some little tips there so I thought that was cool so let's get started so the first one that I'm gonna make is the taco seasoning one um, Andy is really big on, he likes burgers for lunch while he's, he works from home. And while he's here, he will just make a couple of burgers. They're super low carb as we know. And I thought, why don't make him some so he can easily take them out of the freezer and then stick them in the air fryer from there. I will put these in the freezer just because I'll have the room in there. Um, let me wash my hands real quick. I'm gonna touch my seasoning. Now I'm gonna put the taco seasoning in and I was wondering how much taco seasoning should I put in here? Well, I figure normally when I'm making tacos, it says two tablespoons of this per pound. So I'm gonna go with the two tablespoons and I think it's gonna be super flavorful. Okay, so I got two tablespoons of that and then we're just gonna mix this up. You could do, gosh, so many different seasonings. You could do like a Greek style. Um, yeah, I'm doing the Creole. You could just do a barbecue flavor. There's, I mean, the options are endless really, but I might even take one of these for work one day this week, stick it in the microwave. And since it's the taco flavor, throw some like cheese, maybe some salsa on it. Now I know they say you shouldn't, you know, you know, uh, mix up your ground beef too much because it, it'll be hard for them to hold their shape. But I kind of have to, I don't know. I've never had a problem with that. So I want to make sure this is all, you can see a couple of areas that it's kind of uh, chunks of seasoning. So we want it incorporated really well. So I feel a couple of really like frozen pieces in there because it was defrosting, but we're just going to go with it. So did you guys used to watch Rachel Ray? I, I love the Food Network. I used to watch it all the time. And I remember she used to be big on burgers and she would always say, put it in a bowl and then kind of score it into fours. I'm not like a major fancy burger guy, bur burger person. So look at that. Stained my hands. <laughs> all right, let me get a plate so I can put these on there. I'm not prepared. I'm totally not prepared. And Ralphie's down here. He's like, I know you got meat. I can smell it. All right. So I'm just going to make them into burger shapes. Nothing fancy. I used to have like a burger 
patty maker, shaper thing. I can't find it ever since we moved to Atlanta. I can't find it, I don't know where it went. So I'm just gonna have to use the tools that God gave me, my hands. Yes, I know, you smell that meat, don't you? So this will make four, I'll stick them in the freezer. He usually eats two at a time because there's no bun, bunless burgers. All right, so this will really cover him for the week. All right, so there's my taco ones. I'm gonna go ahead and make the um, Creole seasoning ones and I'm using the Tony Chicharos um, original Creole seasoning. There are no sugars in this. It's completely zero carb also, very good ingredient. So I do recommend that, very flavorful. So I'm gonna make them all and then I'll wrap them all and show you what they look like after. Okay, so I'm back and I have made the first four. I've wrapped them up and put them in this bag. Um, I wrapped these two together. These are really small, sad little hamburgers. <laughs> they looked bigger on the plate, but for the Creole ones, I have actually made three larger ones out of it. Um, I'll probably help Andy eat these taco ones because they're a little smaller, but hey, like I said, I'm not a major burger maker, but you just kind of learn as you go. But um, the paper's pretty cool. Um, I'll show you how I wrap the last one. It does say um, to put it, there's like two different sides. There's like a shiny side and that's the side that you want your meat on. And you wanna put it somewhat in the middle and then you're gonna fold it over. And then almost like a burrito, you're folding over the sides. And then you just kind of fold it over and then you fold it over one more time and then you've got your meat wrapped up. Now, kind of cool, yeah, but will I ever buy this again? Probably not. Um, I didn't find it like so extremely useful, but it was free, so hey. So these are gonna be in here and I'm gonna stick these all in the freezer now and Andy can access them for lunches this week. And I have already made some bacon so he can throw up some crumbled bacon. Throw up, that sounded appetizing. He can throw on some crumbled bacon and I have shredded cheese also. So now I've got these two packages of burgers to stick in the freezer that are ready for the week. So next thing I'm gonna make is a buffalo chicken casserole that I'm going to prep. So all I have to do is throw it in the oven when I get home from work. Okay, I'm back. And the next thing that we're gonna make is the buffalo chicken dip casserole. I got this recipe from, it's an online e-cookbook that I got from Time to Shrink. Um, Erica is the person that kind of made the cookbook and she's on YouTube as well. I'll make sure I link her YouTube channel down below for you to see. But I printed out her, her um, e-cookbook that I got and I just put it in, you know, I'm a planner. So I have this extra case and some gold discs from the Happy Planner that I decided I would put together um, this e-cookbook. So I printed everything. Um, it is colorful, but I just thought I'd save ink and it's a pretty big cookbook. As you can see, this is how many pages it is. And then I just kind of made tabs for the different um, categories that she had in here, but she's got everything, appetizers, soups, casseroles, and marinades. But this buffalo chicken dip casserole is so delicious. Even Andy absolutely loved it. It's so easy to put together. Um, and it's a way to get some cauliflower in you without even realizing you're eating it. Cause you know, you've heard me say it on this channel before that I don't wanna eat the cauliflower if it tastes like cauliflower, you know? So this is delicious. It's just kind of a way to get some more veggies in there without you even knowing it. And it's in a casserole form. So um, I'm not gonna show the recipe because she's the one that made it and that wouldn't be fair to her, but I'll definitely tell you what's in it and what it involves. Um, but you've got two cans of um, chicken that is canned. Um, it calls for some cheese, some buffalo sauce. I personally like to use the Frank's buffalo sauce. That is the best. I have a, a buffalo chicken dip that I make myself too. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it up there for you. That was one of my first videos. I think it was like one of the first five I did. Um, but this is by far the best to me. 
Um, then you have some sour cream, some mayonnaise. You need a tablespoon of some ranch dressing and a block of cream cheese softened. So you're gonna mix all of this together, basically all of it together, including your rice cauliflower and throw it in a casserole dish, throw some cheese on top of it again, and you're good to go. But I forgot that I need to soften my cream cheese a little more to make it easier, so stand by. Okay, I'm back. And that was like no time for you because it just stopped and went to the next clip. So I have kind of broken up the chicken a little bit with my fork here. And then now I'm just gonna start throwing everything together. Like seriously, that's what it says. It just says dump everything in there. My sour cream. Some mayonnaise. I need one of those little tiny, tiny rubber spatulas, you know, for like mixing or, or getting everything out of these bigger or smaller uh, measuring cups. And on this, this is actually the amount of cheese that you need for the whole thing. Which doesn't seem like much, right? Gosh. My ranch seasoning. I use the ranch seasoning from, let me get a spoon now, from um, Southern Keto Cookbook. You know I love that cookbook. And I will say that Erica's is probably up there as another one of my favorites. Top three for sure. Um, there's another, oh, there's so many casseroles in there. I haven't even tried everything yet, but there's another one that is a pesto chicken casserole. Oh my gosh. My mom tried it and loved it. And you know, it's all about doing different things with it too. Like my mom made it and put some spinach in hers. And I was like, that sounds delicious. I mean, that's what recipes are. They're supposed to give you ideas. But I love personally following recipes. Like I love it. It's just, I don't know, I'm a rule follower in life too, so. Okay, so here we go. You mix it all up really good. And I'm not gonna cook this now. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge in my casserole dish. You can see a couple pieces of cream cheese, still chunks of it. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and then <clears throat> I'll cook it when I get home. Because I'm thinking, you know, the weather's getting really nice right now. It's so cool out right now. Is it cool where you're at? Um, I've got, you guys are watching from all over the place. So thanks for letting me know in that last video where you guys were watching from because that was totally cool. But here in Georgia, it's like a high of 70 today. It's sunny, it's beautiful, and I am loving it. So I'm thinking maybe we could get back to working out at night you know when I get home from work we uh, throw this in the oven it's got to cook for like 30 minutes and come back and it's done you know so that's what my goal is I'm throwing it in the the cauliflower rice in here frozen too it's gonna defrost while it's sitting in the fridge you know over the next couple of days I don't know when I'm gonna make this yet but I just love the idea that it is ready to go. Of course, you've got those couple of stubborn little chunks of cauliflower rice. All right, mm-mm, good. It's the same thing. You just wanna make sure you got it incorporated really well because I still see a couple chunks of, of uh, cream cheese too. Do you guys have any favorite like e-cookbook people that are keto that you can share with me? Because I'm always looking for new things. Um, I have bought Erica's and then Dat Keto Lady. I've tried hers too. I've only tried one thing from her cookbook so far though. Um, but yeah. Okay, so I think that is good. Let me get my casserole dish out after I rinse my hands. Now I'm using a casserole dish that has a lid on it because that way I can store it in the fridge. 
and it's just me and Andy eating, so. Can you guys see? Okay, so I've got this dish. I have made a mess, haven't I? <laughs> and then you're basically just dumping it. I mean, this is like the easiest thing. I'm all about getting all of the stuff out too. Okay. Now this one calls for ranch. When I make my buffalo chicken dip, it, I use it with blue cheese dressing. What do you guys prefer? I think both are good, like this is delicious, but I do love my dip that I make with the blue cheese dressing also. So there's that, we're good to go. Now I can already tell you that this is not going to be enough cheese for me. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna get a little bit more. I don't wanna overdo it, but gosh. I need a little more. And I just shred a bunch of cheese, so I've got it already ready to go. There we go. All right, so there we go. I have got buffalo chicken dip casserole ready to go for this week. Easy, that took literally maybe what, five to seven minutes to put together. And now I'm gonna stick it in the fridge. We're gonna have this for dinner one night this week. And I'll probably take it for lunch a couple of days too with any leftovers. Um, what am I making next? I don't know, I don't remember. So stay tuned. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to make is something from another online cookbook. I was just telling you about this one. It was from that, that Keto Lady. Big Easy Keto is her e-cookbook. And I just got done saying it and I barely made anything but like one thing out of here. I decided that I would try a dessert. I was looking for a dessert to make and this is the one I'm gonna make. The mini cheesecakes. Um, no, this is not the one. It's the peanut butter cheesecake. Sorry, it was down a different, um, on a different page. But these are peanut butter mini cheesecakes. Um, I'm actually, they're crustless and I am actually using almond butter instead of peanut butter. Um, but I will link, um, she's got a YouTube page too. I will link her information down below so you can follow her if you'd like, but pretty simple recipe, kind of the same thing. You just kind of dump everything together and go from there. So you're going to need some cream cheese that is softened. So I've got that. I softened it before this time. You need some sweetener. I've already got everything measured out here. And some butter. An egg. Some vanilla extract. I'm not measuring. It's like half a tablespoon. But I'm sure it'll be good, right? And actually, when you're just mixing it really good, it says use a hand mixer, which I guess I could, but it looks like it's mixing up pretty well. I'm just gonna get it till it's nice and creamy, and then you're gonna put it in the prepared muffin tins. It makes six, so I don't have one with just six, so I've just prepared six, and I don't have any muffin liners either, so I just sprayed it with some of my avocado oil spray, and we're just gonna hope that that works and that they don't stick. So there is a little bit of chunks from the cream cheese, which is probably why it says beat with the hand mixer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out, beat it real quick, and then I will come back and stick it in the muffin tin. It's gonna cook in the oven, but I'll show you what it looks like when I put it in the oven. Okay, so I'm back. And as you can see, definitely the hand mixer is the way to go. So I just got done telling you guys how I'm such a rule follower and then I'm being too lazy to get the hand mixer out. <laughs> but I did taste it, the batter, and it's delicious. So, Here's hoping that it turns out 
Yeah, these are pretty full too. I kind of like it. It says it only does six. I guess you really need to fill it all the way up. So have you guys, you guys um, have this cookbook from Dat Keto Lady? Let me know if you do, if you've tried any of her recipes that you love, that you recommend because yeah, I haven't tried that many. So we'll go with that one there. All right, I'm gonna get all the rest of this out of here. Don't let it go to waste. See, look at all that. All right, so then this goes in the oven for, gosh, how long? I don't even look. 18 to 20 minutes. So I'll let you know what it looks like when it comes out. I haven't even preheated. So I'm gonna preheat it, stick it in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. I'll show you what it looks like after. She does recommend refrigerating it before you eat it. It is best served cold, but we all love cheesecake cold anyway, so that makes sense. So I'm going to uh, show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so the mini peanut butter cheesecakes, these are crustless, have just come out of the oven. I've let them cool for a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna stick them in the fridge here in a minute, but I wanted to kind of show you what they look like. They're very delicate, so I think that's why they need to cool too. Very interesting without the crust, but they look delicious. And I am very excited to dig into these, but I am gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna let them cool in the refrigerator. But so what I'm really excited about is I marked everything off of my list. Now I did not do a pumpkin dessert. I ended up doing the cheesecake one, but I got everything done on my list. So that is really satisfying. How satisfying is that when you can mark off everything on your checklist? Um, but yeah, that is my meal prep video for this week. I hope you like it. I hope you get some ideas. Please comment down below what your favorite one was. And if you've tried any of these, um, I always love hearing and interacting with you guys. So thanks again so much. If you're watching and you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like it. That really helps me and it kind of motivates me to keep on doing what I'm doing. So I hope you guys are having a great week. I will see you next time.